So this is the fifth video in the series for Office Excel 2010-2007. And in this video, we're going to look at some database functionality available within Excel. Uh, we will also look at a function called subtotal, which creates like a subtotal of a given thing. And we will also look at pivot table. So what I've done here is I've prepared a Excel spreadsheet with date, position, company, like I'm like applying for a job and I'm also trying to track like which jobs are giving me interviews uh, based on the resume that I'm applying and also the telephone number and contact numbers of people. So anytime you start creating a, some kind of a list, you know, this is a list, you've got columns with headings and then you're typing individual headings. And what I did is, is for the date, I clicked on the top where the A is, so it highlights the whole column. And you can either right click on it and go to Format Cells. Or you just click on this button here in the Number category, which takes you to Format Cells. And I chose Date. And within the date, I chose to have this type of a date and I click OK and it every time I type a date it will show up in that order and I'm going to show you how to type that and I did the same thing with the telephone number I clicked here right click go to format cells and then in the special I chose phone number so you click on the phone number and then you just click OK so now this column is set up for a telephone number and I'm just going to scroll down so I can show you what it looks like. So now if I come here and if I try to type a date, so I'll just type 15 OCT11 and I hit tab and it automatically fills up the right format. And the other benefit of typing something in a list is that now if I just type A, it just fills up admin A which I've typed earlier so I don't have to type the whole thing I just hit tab or if I come here and I type R it fills up the word Rogers which I've typed earlier for a company name and then I can type resume 3 type anybody's name and now when I type typing the telephone number 905 some number so I've just made up all these numbers no meaning to it and I can type yes okay. so here is my list I've got like 39 records now the first thing you can do is you can put things in alphabetical order so say I want to put everything in the order of position so I click on that column I click here where it says in the corner sort and filter and I choose sort A to Z now all my positions are in order admin A's are together and then the CSR so all the jobs are in order I can click on company go to sort and filter sort A to Z now all the companies are listed to there and you'll find that all the records all the information is moving along with it so you don't have to highlight or do anything like that I can click on date again I can sort it from A to Z now all the dates are in order You can even right click, I think, and no, nope, they haven't given you the shortcut for right click here. I can even go here, and the next thing we can talk about is called custom sort. In custom sort, I can sort it by multiple things. So I can say, you know what, sort it by position, and then I can add a level, and then I can say, well, after the position, sort it by company, and I click OK. So now what it does is all the admin jobs are together and then within that section it puts all the companies in alphabetical order. And then when I come to the CSR jobs and then all the companies are in alphabetical order. So it's by section by section. So you can sort it by multiple things when you go to custom sort and then you can choose what levels you want to sort so you can just find things quickly. The next thing we will talk about is called filter. So when I click that filter button, it adds these drop down buttons here. So now, say for example, I click here and I say 
remove the resume 2 and resume 1 information. I only want to see resume 3. I click OK. Now I only see the resume 3 information. All the other ones are gone. And you see that this drop down button here has a filter type symbol on it. So I know I've filtered something here. I can remove the filter by clicking here and then choosing clear. So it removes all of them. And you can filter by anything. I can even go in the date, go to the data, date filters, and then I can choose this month, last month, last quarter. I can even go and say between. And now I can pick a date and I can say, you know what, let me see. I want to see stuff from August 1st, click in the next section, till December 1st. And I click OK. I only see results from August 1st to December 1st. I can click here again and choose clear to remove it. And you can keep on filtering even more so that you can ex get exactly what you want. I can click clear and it puts things back here. If I want to remove the filter, I click here and I choose click on the filter button again so that will remove the filter. The next thing we'll talk about what's called subtotal. So I've got a sample typed here. And so I've got a list of people's names. And, and they work in different region. And there are some people who work in, the, in Scott works in the north, south, all the regions. So then this is sales by various regions. So what I want to do is automatically I want to create a subtotal of whatever I want to subtotal for. Now the trick to subtotal, the only thing you need to remember is you need to make sure that there, there are certain things which are grouped together. So if you look in this case, you see all the regions are grouped together. Because I would like to have a subtotal after all the regions. So there will be a north subtotal, south subtotal, east subtotal, west subtotal. So I just click on the cell A1. You want to make sure that you're not clicked here somewhere. You need to be in your information. And then you go to data tab and then you look for the option called subtotal. Click it. Now look at the first statement there at each change in. Now do I want a subtotal after name which is not the case in this example. I want to put a subtotal after every region. So I click here and choose region. And then the sum, because I want to do a summation of sales, because I can, it can add the number of sales. There's a whole bunch of options here that if you wanted to look at, you can look at count, average, and things. Usually sum is the most common one. And I click OK. And now you'll find there is a north total, south total, east total, west total, and a grand total. I can click here again, go back to subtotal. And I can choose remove all so that will remove it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the name and I want to group this together. I want to sort this in alphabetical order. So within the data range there is this button here the A to Z which I can use. You don't have to go to the home. You can even go there and use this button. But within the data you have this button. So just click this. Don't click this. Just click this A to Z. Now you see all the Brian's are together, Scott's together, and the Wendy's together. Now I go to subtotal again. Now this time, at each change in, I want it to be name because every time the name changes, put a subtotal. The summation of sales is fine. I click OK. And there it is, my Brian total, Scott total, Wendy total, and the grand total. I can click here, click on subtotal, and I can remove all. So that's it to subtotal. It's a good way to get things done faster. The next thing I want to talk about is what's known as a pivot table. So I'm going to use this example 
on my job search type of a thing to do the pivot table. I'm just going to do a basic introduction, but the pivot table is more about just playing with different options and working out how to see your information in a really good way. So it's, you're taking your data and then you're trying to make sense out of it because right now I'm like, I don't know how many jobs have I applied for admin, how many jobs have I applied where I've received yeses and noes. So I can use pivot table to organize my information in a nice way. So I go to insert and there is a pivot table option right here and I choose pivot table. And it right away comes up and it highlights my information for me. If I did not want to use all of it, you, I could use this button and just highlight what I want. So I'm just going to leave it like that and it's going to add a new worksheet for the pivot table. I click OK. So you see on the bottom it adds sheet 4. Now look on the right hand side, there are these four sections on the bottom. The report filter, the column labels, row labels and the value. So what I can start doing is say I want to take my position and I click in the row and you'll find that it automatically adds it to the row section. I can take my company and I can put it in the column section. So all the companies are listed here. And then if I also wanted I could take the interviews and I can put it in the row and then it adds the yes and no. Now I want to see something so I can take the interview and drop it in the values so it will do a summation. So now I start seeing some information that I can use so I can start seeing that okay I've applied for four jobs at this company Bell for admin. Three of them I did not get an interview, one I did. So I start seeing what's going on and then I can see the grand total. I applied for 18 admin jobs, 15 were no three were yes. I applied for 21 CSR jobs, customer service representative type of jobs, and 17 were a yes and four were a no. So you are taking your data and now you are trying to make sense out of it. It's just getting a little better. Now if I did, I want to change something, say I decided to see something about the kind of resumes that are giving me more responses. So I want to remove the company. I click on it and remove it. And say I take the resume and I put the resume here. Now I see information about my resume and I can start seeing that, okay, how many resume jobs, which resume jobs are giving me more yeses and which resume jobs are giving me no no's. So I start looking and I see here, resume 3 has given me more yeses on CSR and up here in the admin I've got two so that gives me 14 jobs that I've got a yes from resume 3. Resume 2 up here I've got 11 no's and 3 no's so that's really not working and uh, resume 1 is kind of in the middle it's like 3 and 1 so 4 jobs out of 9. So again you can just keep on playing with this and trying to find uh, what way works and you can swap positions I can take the resume put it here now you see I've got nothing in the column so now it puts it in this order and I can take the position and put them in the column now I see my information in a different way so this is what pivot table is really good for in trying to take any kind of information that you have and trying to arrange it in a logical idea and you can keep on working with this and trying to remove things remove the resume, put the company um, if you wanted you could just do a can't find it recent All right. So here there is this example with lots of information about sales uh, of country, salesperson, order date, order ID, order amount. So I'll create an insert, pivot table, pivot table, click OK. Now I can start working and say um, I'll put the country in the column 
and say I want to take salesperson put them in the rows so there are these salespeople and then I can take the order amount and put them in the summation so now I automatically get uh, different individuals in different countries doing different sales amounts and I can even take it switch them put the country in the row take the salesperson put them in the column and I can find you know that in this way it looks better so I can go with that so you can just work your way around it and um, you can play with it and get better at uh, pivot table uh, if you look uh, online you might find some examples of pivot table if you don't want to type the whole thing or just make up something really quick thank you for and I chose date and within the date I chose to have this type of a date and I click OK and it every time I type a date it will show up in that order and I'm going to show you headings and what I did is is for the date I clicked on the top where the A is so it highlights the whole column and you can either right click on it and go to format cells or you just click on this button here in the number category which takes you to format cells so this is the fifth video in the series for Office Excel 2010-2007 and in this video we're going to look at some database functionality available within Excel. Uh, we will also look at a function called subtotal which creates like a subtotal of a given thing and we will also look at pivot table. So what I've done here is I've prepared a Excel spreadsheet with date position company like I'm like applying for a job and I'm also trying to track like which jobs are giving me interviews uh, based on the resume that I'm applying and also the telephone number and contact numbers of people so anytime you start creating a, some kind of a list you know this is a list you've got columns with headings and then you're typing individual headings.